Hi, everybody. What a busy day we've had. It's just wonderful. Thank you all for holding on for one more hour and uh, uh, learning about the most important part of the day. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it's the most important is because it's something that you can do right away. I know when I first started coming to these um, conferences and events, I was so overwhelmed and it found people that were far advanced than me. And some of you are at that place too, but it's, it's a very uh, easy start. And, and as we know, substitute staffing is such an important part of the need right now. And so we want to tell you about it. I noticed earlier today I couldn't hear some people. Are y'all able to hear me? Do I need to speak up a little more? You're doing okay? Okay, great. Uh, I'm Gina Tech. I'm from Tennessee. Um, I'm from work with the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. Our initiative is called Child Care Tennessee. And um, we have found that our specialty is to support the administrators and the directors of programs. That is something that was missing in our community and in our state. And there's a lot of great resources for other um, parts of the work that the child care directors, administrators, owners do. But it's something that we found that we could um, really make a difference. And so we uh, started out with a um, Child Care Finder, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And then we also have the CCA Global. We're the entity that owns that in our state. We now have a very small financial back office and our substitute service. So um, we, we started out do, creating, I had been a director for many, many, many <laughs> years and came to the foundation and start saying we need to do a substitute service. But we need, we didn't want to do it in a traditional way because uh, we'd had that, the coordinator comes early in the morning and you know everybody fights to call quickly at 5.30 and um, someone just shows up at your facility. You don't always know who it's gonna be. So we pulled a group of directors together and we found, we asked them what was important, what how they wanted it to look. And so we just started formulating it from that. And that was, um, in the fall of 2015, and uh, we knew we, we we knew what we wanted, and you know uh, this slide tells you the things that you already know. We know that we're we're trying to find ways to create quality to make um, um, it easier for administrators, directors, teachers to focus on the children and the families and take away all those other things that get in the way. And we, as we uh, talked to the uh, focus group that we had, they wanted familiar faces. They wanted staff that was available whenever they uh, needed it, that had some training. They needed, the parents needed to have that assurance that there was, you know, familiar trained substitutes that were coming in. And then even another factor was that we wanted to add professionalism to the field by giving the staff that benefit of being able to be away from their classroom, to take care of personal needs, to go to professional development, those things that we overlook so often. And uh, we just think we're just, oh, we need a warm body. You know, we've all said that, you know, need, need a warm body in the room. And, and we found out that there's a lot more to that and that it adds just, um, a lot more. So here are some of the benefits of what we're doing. We're going to talk in just broad strokes for a few minutes. Then we're going to talk about the specifics of the platform. We're not really going to open the platform and look at it today, but I'm just certainly available after this, a time tomorrow, a Zoom call later, if you want to just really look at the specifics and how it looks, works and looks on the back end. And then we're going to spend some time um, with uh, the group from Indiana is one of our groups that is using the platform now. So there you're going to get to hear from someone that is um, actually, you know, using it in, in their space. And, and you'll find that there's many different ways that this platform can be used. It's really just a tool that's available that takes away some of the work. And then I always laugh and say, it doesn't come with the substitutes. That's the part that you have to do. And you will need, you know, a coordinator, um, at least a part-time coordinator to manage that part. But the uh, platform really just is, is, you'll see, it's just seamless. It just works uh, on its own. It's just a really, really easy tool to use. And that's what we wanted. We wanted it to be very easy 
um, you know, it's affordable and flexible. We, um, the way that the, the service works is the substitutes don't work for us. We're a finder of the substitutes. We uh, background check them under our name. We got approval from our state to do that. That's the very first thing that you have to do is figure out how that background check is going to work. Uh, so we're able now to do that under our name. Um, we um, then we find the subs. We go through the training with them. We c collect all their documentation. We keep that in a password protected site. And then um, the we make it very affordable for the providers that use the service. So we wanted to have it set up so that they didn't have a monthly fee to pay, that they didn't have to you know, have a responsibility to use the sub uh, more than what they wanted. So we wanted to meet a lot of different bud budgets. Um, and we can talk about that more in a few minutes. And we wanted to train the subs at least at, at a level that we felt like we had quality uh, subs coming in, and as we talked about, uh, developing that professionalism so that the substitutes feel like part of the team too, that they're not just, you know, filling the gap, that they're welcome, that they know that they're contributing not only to the children, but to the staff and the families as well. Uh, we talked about the staff having time off, that consistency of care, and then we've also found that it's a great way for substitutes and, pe and just people to be introduced to the field. Um, and about, we want our subs to get hired and to go into field, into the field. They have to stay in our uh, pool about six months before that happens. I think over the years, we've gotten, had about 12 of our substitutes hired into a, a regular position. And so that creates more turnover and it's more work for us to do. But we have found that uh, that's a really important part of our work that um, it gives them, it gives people an opportunity. It's kind of a no a trial, you know, a no risk. You you work for a while, then you realize you that you enjoy it. You get more training. Uh, we connect them with more training. Uh, our our state has a great. Um, uh, opportunity for people to get their CDA and first two years of their associates at, uh, at no cost. And so we uh, guide them into that if they're interested. So there's, you know, a lot of, it's a good starting point. Uh, so as I said, the, the way that the system works on the front end, uh, we have a public facing site. It's called childcarenashville.com. You can pull up on your phones if you want to right now and look at it. It's childcarenashville.com. And it's a child care finder that is uh, designed for um, families to find child care. In the beginning, when it started, 2008, 2009, uh, after that economic downturn, we used to say the economic downturn, but I think we were past, we had to define which one we're talking about now. Um, the, uh, we, we started it because our child care providers had lots of empty slots. And it's really hard for us to imagine that in most places now but uh, they needed support with their enrollment. So we um, built our own child care finder and um, it's, um, it's, it was very unique at the time and that each uh, provider has their own login and they record if they have openings and availability in their program. We adapted it during the pandemic so that they can mark if they were open or closed uh, for services. So. It's our own product, it's, and so we uh, have been able to create it the way we want, want it to look. Uh, so in 2015, when we started talking about doing the substitute service, our web developer said, well, why don't we build this as a platform so in case anyone else is ever interested in purchasing it. So it was really a unique time for us because we were doing something just because we needed it. And so after we built that, that so, so the plant, the, the, the um, finder part is a is for purchase as a platform, and the substitute pool is is also for purchase. And you can combine them and have a front facing and and the back substitute pool, which is not open to, as a public view, or you can choose one or the other. And uh, so after we created it, got it off the ground, then people started 
calling, you know, I came to one of these conferences and talked about it and the people kept asking about it. And so suddenly, you know, there was this great interest in it. And so it's, it's a, it's a fun, just something that just happened. We're now in Indiana, um, Montana, Ohio, and Vermont, who are all using our platform. We're also expanding across the state of Tennessee. Now we've got some funding this year to um, expand across the state and, the reason the state's interested in doing it is they're going to use our substitutes when um, there's some paid professional development for infant toddler training. And when the um, teachers finish that training, then they can go to a demonstration school for uh, some observation. And the state wants to pay for that time that the substitute is um, in, the, in the classroom. And so it's a bit of a pilot program we're, we're doing with that, but it's great because it helps us to build out uh, the substitutes and, and they can use it for different uh, so reasons. So is the substitute pool just set up for private pay right now? It doesn't incorporate subsidized where the state pays the sub to work for childcare providers from different funding sources? Um, the this Yes, currently the uh, substitutes are, we set the wage for the substitutes and they make the same amount everywhere they work. We don't pay the subs. The substitutes are paid by the centers when they work for that day. Um, they, um, under this situation with the professional development, the uh, DHS, that's who we're licensed by, will pay that wage for them. So we've got a little bit of a hybrid start and having some other uh, payment opportunities there. But remember, as I said, this is a platform that can be used in any way that you want to. You can you can uh, pay the, someone. Funder can pay the f subs. They can be you know free to them. Your state license. Whoever wants to pay them can can pay them. You can set it up how you want to. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of how the system works, um, after from from the directors. Um, we don't currently have any family child care providers that are using it. There's some special um, considerations with that if you're going to have uh, someone replacing someone that is there who's the um, um, so, so called uh, caregiver. But so we're currently we're just in child care centers, um, but there's certainly options and ways that you could make that work in your uh, situation if you wanted to. So the subs currently only qualify for center-based care. They're not allowed to be left alone with children unattended. They have to have a assistant staff with them present. That is not a state regulation. That's just a, we are just not currently servicing anything, any groups except for centers. Okay. Yeah, that that's our choice to do that right now. Uh, but certainly our state would allow substitutes to be in the family group homes, but, and, and they arrange that privately however they want to. Uh, so the, um, the directors, they buy a package of placements from us and they buy that up front. So uh, they might, they're about uh, $15 a day and that's to help cover our costs. And each time that a, um, a, a director posts a job, and uses one of our subs, one of those placements is subtracted that's taken from the system. And then uh, they can buy more. We use Stripe, so they can just buy them online. And so they have these places, these tax rates, they never expire. They can just use them when they want to. So once they're set up, they're ready to use our service. On the substitute side, we have gotten them their background check. We've got, gotten all their personnel documents. Uh, we've done the required state training. That's all uh, supervised by us. And um, so, and they've done some observation in, in, a, in a classroom. And so now they're ready. And then we put them all on, on the portal so that they have access to the site. And then, then it just takes over from there. The director signs into the back end of the website. Uh, they post the job, just a little template that they use. Um, a text message goes out to all of the available subs that don't have a job for the day. If the substitute is interested, they apply for the job. Then the director can see their bio, they can see what they what their wage is for the day. Then they kind of just kind of wait around, see if they get another one that, you know, a lucky day they'd have two choices. 
And then um, they, the director sees that bio, they can look at their, all of their credentials if they wish, and they select that, that person. A text message goes back to the sub saying, you're hired for the day, and they show up to work for the day. So it's a very, very simple system. Um, and it's, there's no list for anyone to call. It's just, you know, we, we've done all the work on the back end for them. Uh, as I said, the, the question is, where are you going to get the substitutes? How they, and I'm not going by my PowerPoint very much here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how, how, uh, how you're going to get the substitutes, we use all different, every kind of method you can think of. Uh, we have relationships with one of our technical colleges that uh, provides a CDA, and they do their um, placement for school as our substitutes. So they're basically getting paid to go to school. We have students, um, it's Music City. We have a lot of musicians that do odd uh, jobs for us. Uh, we have uh, older retired people, um, moms in particular that maybe wanna work just during school hours. Uh, there may be people that care for an elderly parent. They can't always work. And so it's very flexible for the substitutes to uh, work when they choose to. And so we have to have a lot of substitutes in order to make that, that match work. That was my next question. So like, let's say in the state of Indiana, how many subs do you have in Indiana right now to, in the fulfillment center? And then what's the percentage of a sub actually showing up when you request one? Right. So Indiana is just launching. And so there, she, and she'll tell you a little bit more about that right now, where they are on that. We're, we're in Tennessee. And at pre-pandemic, at our height, we had uh, 25 uh, centers participating at about 12 subs. Most jobs are getting filled then, but that still wasn't, it's never, there's never enough subs. You, you just wanted all that you can get. And what we, we always have more programs that want to participate, but we hold them into a waiting list until we feel like we have enough subs that most of their jobs get filled. Um, most of our subs, many of our subs work, do work every day, but then we have some that are seasonal. Um, our, we have school teachers that only work in the summer. Uh, we have uh, college students that maybe only work on their breaks. You know, so we, we just kind of keep that balanced out of how, um, how many we need and when we can add more um, centers to our pool. So, you know, we're, we're not we're not to the point that we'd like to be and that we had uh, an abundance of subs and that we can meet all their needs. We do better at the, those jobs that are posted ahead of time uh, because um, our subs often get taken, you know, in advance. But of course, we want to get to the point where you have day of because that's, that's the desperate need and what everybody really, really, of course, wants, wants to do. I've got a little video here of one of our subs. It's actually, this was, uh, Roslyn was our very first sub that we ever hired. I was at a, a NACI local conference and I was working some table there. I think telling him about our child care finder. And she stopped by and started talking to me. I said, um, you know, I, I'm, I'd love for you to know about this because I think she was working for the Y some doing some different things. She, <laughs> she's actually a retired IRS agent <laughs> and kind of went into education as a, a, a late job. So I'm going to see if I can get this to work. Let's see if it will. My name is Rosalind Whitaker. I've been with the Child Care Substitute uh, program since uh, 2016. I was attending a training session for the Y. Uh, I, I used to uh, sub for them. And I met one of the managers uh, of Child Care Matters and uh, she recruited me and told me she wanted to start up the program. And I was very interested and asked her what I needed to do. She told me, I went through all of the procedures that needed to get done, the fingerprinting, and there was some ID and um, information they needed some transcripts and, and such, and training. When I signed up, it was pretty much online training. We had to have first aid training. We had to be certified in first aid training. We had to have uh, certain child abuse classes and uh, anything that was available to uh, hold, um, you know, face-to-face, -face, I took advantage of. But I was already in 
class and in Nashville State, taking early childhood classes. So I pretty much came equipped and I was also certified as a teacher. So there really wasn't much that I needed to do. I was interested in preschool because I just saw a need for children to get a good start. Well, most of the time when I take an assignment, um, I talk to the director ahead of time. I understand what the director's needs are for that particular classroom. I observe for a little bit, and then I just get into it. I, I pretty much, it's a seamless thing for me, but if uh, I were a new teacher, um, I would just say that, you know, get a chance to observe, get a chance to interact with the kids, um, and, uh, and then you should be fine because the directors and their staff will support you. There's just an immense need so much that they're looking at other levels of education to hire subs. So I have a smartphone and you really need that. Uh, or a computer or whatever. I get my notifications um, via text message and or uh, email. And when I get a message, I know there's an assignment that um, is listed. I'll go on the platform uh, for Child Care Matters. I'll look at the school, I'll look at the hours, I'll look at the grade level uh, or um, preschool versus infant toddler, and then I will select and say I'm available, and then it'll say okay, and then that's to let you know, you know, do you really want it? And then um, you wait a while, and then the school will accept, or the director will accept you, and then you're ready to schedule. I just calendared after that. The preschools have directors who really have their act, acts together. They really do. They have uh, cert supplies, they have um, materials for the students, they have the environment for the students, um, and they, they have staff that really care about the students. So working in that environment, you feel supported, you feel nurtured, even if you're experienced, you still feel nurtured. And uh, it's like a family. I mean, and that's why I stay with it, because most of these folks, you know, like, uh, they're like family. I think it may, in some cases, be a starter job. For me, it was an after-retirement job. Um, but uh, it could, you know, just be whatever you want it to be. And that's, I think, the message, that subbing is what you want it to be. She, she's been great, and she is excellent in the uh, classroom. Let's see how I got that. I don't want to watch all the rest of the video. It's not advancing anymore. I probably need to close the mouse pad, I think. And the mouse pad, and then it should start working again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, as I said, um, we uh, are in other locations now, and this is the spiral points available, of course, on, on your um, uh, little app that we have. And you can see Ohio, their their um, Ohio is um, their child care resource and referral uses that. And they, so there's one program where it started in Lorraine County, and then now they're expanded to other regions in Ohio and are spreading statewide. Um, Vermont is a community foundation, Let's Grow Kids. So you may be familiar with their work. They have, and there's a statewide. Um, Montana is C, uh, their CCR and ours using the Child Care Finder uh, internally. And then they are gonna launch the sub pool as well. And then we're going to hear from Jennifer in just a, a minute as well. Can we watch this one? It's really, yeah. it's really okay. great. I think it'll be good for them to actually sure. see it. Yeah. How it so happens. yeah. So this is is Ohio in Action that had created their own uh, video. Teachers are everyday heroes. It is hard work. It is important work. It is the best work. And we believe that a child care system that supports its educators is one that best serves its children. 
Child Care Staffing Solutions is an innovative platform that connects qualified educators to temporary jobs at early childhood centers. We are not a typical staffing organization. Our system runs on easy-to-use automated technology that allows you to see center openings quickly and respond immediately. When a child care center needs a substitute, the director sends out a message that you get through the automated platform. You are immediately notified via email or text message and can apply for the position with one click from your phone or computer. The director then reviews your profile and hires you for the job. It's easy, it's automated, and it's fast. Child Care Staffing Solutions offers several advantages. Flexibility to choose the positions that work for you. Reliable pay or extra income. First-hand experience in child care centers before accepting a full-time position. The opportunity to build relationships within the industry. The ability to do the work you love in a way that works for you. Child Care Staffing Solutions creates a better system where child care centers and educators are supported because that is what children deserve. So that is us in action. And uh, we would love to share the uh, information with you how, about how to do it. Um, I am, let's see if we can get back to the power. Oops, I was closed our, our Zoom. Uh, <laughs> Um, you can tell I'm a real technology expert. Um, um, the, and that's what's great about this because you don't, the, no one has to be a technology expert to use it except for our technology people that take care of all of the, uh, the information. And they, we do have people that help you get started, you know, walk you through all the training and, and have, have do it in, in your location. Um, and it, there's a lot of different ways that it can be used. It can be used if you have an alliance, then you want to just use it for scheduling for your substitutes for your small group. It works for that. If you want to go statewide, there's a way for it to work for that. So there's a lot of different ways. So just dream about a little bit. Think about the ways that, that it can work for you. And we're going to let Jennifer talk about the way that they've done it in Indiana, but we'll take a minute to have those questions that you may uh, have as she's getting ready. All right. Mm -hmm. David, can you restate, you mentioned the director's by package of placement. Mm -hmm. Can you restate what that was? Sure. And of course, that's another part of it that can be set up the way that you want to do if they're paying. If, you know, some, some people have funding that at least for a while pays that piece of it for you. Uh, but mm -hmm. the way that we do it is we have... I think there's five different placement levels that um, they can, that's the small smallest numbers, five or six placements, and it goes up to, I think, 50 placements. And so you, if they bought the smallest package, they're $18 a placement. And if they buy the largest placement, they're $13 a placement. So the, buy you, the more you buy, you know, the less expensive they are. And then the system, each time that they post a job, um, the system takes a, a, a placement away from their tally. If they don't get that job filled, then it goes back on. You know, it's just a, like a like your debit card holds your you know um, money for a minute. So and that's the fee attached to you utilizing the subsidy. That's right, and that goes you toward sub separately on top of that. And that's right, and it's about it's between a dollar and two dollars an hour extra that they pay, but they pay that in advance, and that goes toward uh, to helping to pay our cost to run the program. And then we set the substitute's wage and they um, know that before they hire them for the day, uh, we keep all of the information. We use one hub is where uh, we hold all of that, all of that so that it's linked to their profile when they uh, sign up for the, for the job, uh, except for the payroll information. And they collect that on site and they handle that um, themselves. Some, some people put them on their payroll, some people do a 1099, some people do direct deposit. We know they have, know how to pay people and so we don't need to be involved in that. And we just, you know, we of course have records of when they work. Um, and we also uh, committed to DHS when they allowed us to do the, the sub pool that we would always have open records 
And of course, they've never needed to ask us, but if there was ever an incident that they needed to know where our subs worked and, you know, anything that they were involved in, that that's always available and open to them. So through the pandemic, a lot of the <clears throat> nursing um, positions were, were put available and then they would have a, you know, an increased pay or a bonus associated with them if they were a needed position. Do you all have anything like that? Like if somebody's scheduling a week out, but now it's the day of, do they have an opportunity to pay up $50 bonus to get somebody to reply? We have not done that, but that would certainly be, if you had a large number of subs in your pool, you could certainly do that uh, because they, right now, usually our subs are already taken by that point. And so that that's not an opportunity, but that would certainly be a great thing with the uh, this DHS professional development program, they are making uh, $15 an hour, which is a little bit higher than most of our subs make um, anyway. And so we think that's gonna be that type of incentive for them to take those particular jobs. Okay, Jennifer. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Myers. I'm the director of Monroe Smart Start. Um, I bring you greetings from Bloomington, Indiana. It's the home of Indiana University and uh, the basketball capital of the world. Um, and so we've recently launched, like Gina said, a shared services hub. Um, we're utilizing Child Care Tennessee with Child Care Matters, and we're finding it to be a slam dunk. So we're super <laughs> happy with that. Um, um, Monroe Smart Start is an initiative, like I said, of the Community <laughs> Foundation um, of Bloomington and Monroe County. We're celebrating 15 years now for our Shared Services Hub. Our, not Shared Services Hub, 15 years for our coalition, sorry. Got ahead, got ahead on my slide here. We'd be in a much different place if we were 15 years. Yeah, so 15 years for our coalition. Um, our foundation has invested over $2.8 million in um, early learning initiatives since 2009, increasing access to high quality early childhood learning opportunities within our community, engaging family uh, engagement, um, increasing community partnerships, and educating our community about the important role that early learning plays um, for the vitality of our current and future workforce. Um, we also have served as a local nav navigator um, assisting families with programs that meet their financial capabilities. Um, and our foundation uh, provides the matching requirement um, in our state of Indiana to receive free pre-K for eligible four-year-olds for Indiana's On My Way Pre-K. We've made notable um, progress relative to quality advancements within our community. Um, through Monroe Smart Starts Quality Cohorts. Um, we've engaged over 60 uh, early childhood programs um, in our quality cohorts and over 75% um, of those programs have advanced either one or two uh, levels, one or more levels in Indiana's voluntary child care rating system uh, known as PASS to Quality. And while level advancements continue to serve as a marker of high quality for programs, uh, we really believe that shared services support the increased business acumen um, that yields a high quality business um, for long-term sustainability. Are you here? <laughs> Maybe some of you are too. So this August, our uh, Shared Services Hub will celebrate its one-year anniversary. Uh, three years ago, we attended the Opportunities Exchange Conference in Detroit, and our team walked away feeling just really hopeful, uh, really overwhelmed, um, but really excited uh, about the future of early learning. So if you're a newbie uh, like us into this world of shared services, then you might have experienced some similar perceptions that this slide uh, depicts here, like everybody already has this figured out. Uh, that's an, the way I know that we felt in Detroit. So you can allow us to be a reality check. Uh, shared services provide a continuum of, of support and, it's, and it likely already dovetails with what your organization's existing initiatives are. Um, and if you're like our community, uh, we need an immediate solution to recruit and retain a qualified early childhood workforce. Uh, but before we could launch our, our shared services approach, we really needed to better understand uh, the local needs of our child care community. So in a recent child care survey, 70% of our local providers let us know that recruiting and retaining qualified staff is much more difficult now than it was pre-pandemic. Not a surprise, right, for any of us. 
Um, and then the greatest staffing challenges and struggles for them, um, number one was hiring at 48% there, followed by staff recruitment and staff retention. So in preparation for our hub launch, we asked our programs which shared services would be most advantageous uh, to their business. And so their biggest needs revolve around staffing again. And so the majority of them said, bring us substitutes. So 40% of our respondents said, we need um, some type of a substitute pool. Education was a close second, then uh, followed by recruitment and enrollment. So based on their responses, we, we felt confident that our chosen technology platforms could help to ease their burden. Um, Monroe County is home to 7,600 children under the age of six, and the majority of the kids need care because both adults in the household are working or going to school. Um, and the local, um, the majority of our local employers also have told us that child care is one of their top challenges. In fact, 94% of our larger employers that we surveyed, surveyed let us know that. Um, and then in 2020, right, when the pandemic happened, nearly 60% of our community's high quality programs were shut down <laughs> from March to April. And then looking further ahead into that whole summer, 23% of them were still closed all summer. So fast forward, you know, two years later, 72% uh, of our high quality programs are still operating at a reduced enrollment. And now it's not because of social distancing, it's because they can't find the staffing. Um, and so it's predicted that by 2028, that we'll have a deficit of 281 child care workers. So we have an immediate need to attract and retain um, an early childhood workforce that meets the needs of our community. And I'm certain that this landscape uh, that I've just described also depicts each of your communities. Thanks to Early Learning Indiana, uh, we had an opportunity to change our existing early learning landscape and build a better future, not only for childcare businesses, but the children and families that they serve through Indiana Stronger Together initiative. With support from Early Learning Indiana, Stronger Together grants institute the creation of re a regional shared service offerings that provide economies of scale for providers, operating expenses, and allows time to focus on the business of learning. Indiana has launched seven hubs. We have Early Learning Indiana with us in the back. Natalie's with us uh, leading this, um, leading this uh, project for us. And then we also have some other hubs within the room in the audience, some familiar faces. So I don't know, would you just stand up if you're a hub member, one of our seven stand up so people can see, and that gives you some extra people to contact here at the sessions over and see what they're doing, so. Um, so uh, our pilot, in our pilot phase, we only have 12 hubs to start, or sorry, 12 programs in our hub to start. And so these 12 programs um, are a variety of auspices and collectively they have a capacity that serves 572 children. Um, you'll note that the, the majority of our programs are family child care homes. So we do plan to have the substitute pool um, be able to help provide relief to family child care homes. Um, and uh, this is how we're going to do this. <laughs> so in order to meet <laughs> the most pressing needs of local programs, we've chosen two technology hubs. Um, so Wonder School is providing the business and the operational needs, and Child Care Matters then is our solution to the early educator workforce shortage. Um, we're exploring the potential of a data merge between these two automated systems. So more on that to come. Um, our substitute pool is the last service for our hub members to launch. Um, and again, right, it was, it's the one that they've asked for the most, 40%. We saw that in that slide. It's the one that they, they can't wait for it to launch, but it is taking a little bit of time. Um, we are awaiting an early educator substitute certificate in Indiana, um, and that will allow a substitute to remain in compliance with licensing so they can move from program to program, serve all of the various auspices um, of, our, of our hub. Um, and so this is um, being done in partnership with the Office of Early Childhood and Out-of-School Learning. Um, and so we're really appreciative of their collaboration. So our sub pool will help fill the gap for immediate and uh, planned absences. And we'll also see this as an opportunity um, to provide some paid planning time. So an incentive for our hub members to be a part of our hub. Um, so we're excited to offer that, especially to family child care homes that um, don't have that luxury. And then our sub pool build out will meet the emergent needs of educator substitutes, but also it will serve as a pipeline build out for future talent. And so this is where we see is just the real 
uh, missing link, right, within our community. Um, we're going to look at um, uh, apprenticeships and mentor programs to help uh, provide that additional support for substitutes as we're, we're feeding them into this feeder system. And then utilizing fast track education and cert uh, certification classes so that this will allow us to skill up this workforce a lot more quickly. We're excited, uh, really excited about the opportunities that our hubs are going to create for this, uh, for our entire community and our region as a whole as we uh, extend these services beyond our community um, and into our region. Uh, so we invite you to follow our journey, um, visit our website, follow us on social media, and reach out. Uh, we would, we can learn so much together, um, and we'd love to be able to hear about your journey. A few little closing reminders bringing this together because I hope each of you are kind of thinking about how could, could we make this work where we are, how it would be a useful platform. So I always look like to separate the platform from other pieces of the work so that you have a full picture of, of what's ahead in your journey if you choose to do it. Um, I am not a salesman, and so I, I, I always try to like to tell people how much things cost. I don't try to leave you wondering, and, and it's like, oh, it's a teaser. Um, it depends on the customization for your program. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, there's a wide range. We um, encourage you to use the platform as it is with, with some customization for your filters and what you need, but the more reporting you need, the more extra thing than the cost of courses just for our development of that, of that part of it. Uh, the really, really fascinating part of, the, of this work of, because our finder and our substitute pool, everyone signs into childcarematters.com anywhere in the country. And of course, Jennifer and her program will only be able to see the data for her in, in Tennessee, we can see everyone's, but in, you know, in the, um, but underneath this all, we're really just collecting a national database of information. And so as we bring in more of you and more partners and more uh, interested groups, then that's building. And so there's a lot of potential down the road, uh, you know, anytime that we can collect shared data, there's good things that are going to come from that. So we're very eager to make that happen. Um, and then the other part of that is that when um, a, a new program joins us and they need customization, then everybody in the system gets that customization. And so we're really growing this product together. And um, I know in particular, when Ohio came on because they're CCRNR, they needed a lot of uh, reporting data that they for their funders. And so we developed a lot of reports that we didn't have at that time. And so we're just really building that part of it. I'll get with you just one second. And uh, so, um, so we've got that piece, but the, the piece is beyond the platform, which is probably going to be probably about $30,000 for you to, to launch that for your first year for all of the development, all of the training, the manuals, everything that comes with that. Um, and then there's some yearly maintenance fees that are between eight and $10,000. And that covers everything. There's no surprises because, um, as I said, it's, it's everybody's building this platform together. And so that's all your hosting fees and your domain and your um, upkeep and maintenance and, and improvements. So that gives you just kind of an idea of the funding that you would need to find for it. You're going to need someone to manage the system. It may be someone that's on your staff already that has another role. Um, most of the time, we have a full-time coordinator because we're managing the whole system, but probably a, a part-time person is adequate. Depends on how many substitutes you want, how, how wide of an uh, area that you're serving. You can also create your, your platform so that there are uh, satellite locations under you that uh, you know that you support, which would take more management on your part if you want to serve, you know, a wider area of your state or you know beyond that. Um, and then you also would need someone to manage some of the financial part of it of the payments that the uh, provider um, pays to you if you have those payments. So that is a bit of an overview of how it works. And now I'll take your question.
Um, so I heard you say about uh, you had to tailor one for Ohio based on their funders and the reporting that they had to do. So you do have a potential possibility of using subsidized monies or or grants or in order to pay for subs out of that system. Are you able to do that? We, we just moment. create the platform and you fund it however it works for you. You're just going to pay us the fees and, and where you get that funding is certainly a, a mixed bag for depending on where you are. Then, then the rest of it, once it gets to paying the sub, that's within your own system. So we're just a tool to help you to make that happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, are you able to provide an example of how we're using the substitute pool in Bloomington? Or like how it's going to go for us, like working with the providers and whether the providers are paying the subs directly or how that's going to work? We're still in the planning phase of that, really. I mean, because we're because we're a, a pilot and initially this is grant funded, um, we're looking at uh, the partnership with this uh, substitute certificate to really be the pilot. Um, so initially, um, that will be covered. Um, we also have been really fortunate to get some grant funding through this, our city um, to help support our substitute pool, which is also going to give us some additional dollars to be able to support. We want to make sure that when this rolls out and it grows out, uh, that it's well sustainable. And so we want to get it right. So um, I think it's going to take us a little bit of time to really figure out um, what that's going to look like. So is your pay structure, did you um, develop that based on averages in the state or oh, those certain areas? That's really how, how is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so our state through our Indiana uh, Association for the Education of Young Children has recently um, done workforce profiles. So we use those to sort of gauge our local community, but through a regional lens to see exactly what really is being paid, whether you're a based on your auspice. Um, and so in our community, it's really skewed a bit because we have uh, Indiana University, like I mentioned, um, and they have really great pay and benefits. And then our school corporation is also um, on our um, um, the highest level in Passaquoddy as well. And um, they also are salaried. So we, we really are trying to understand first what's the real pay. And then secondly, we really see this as an opportunity for us to set the bar for what's acceptable pay. Um, and so that's how we really want to utilize these grant dollars. Um, we have a city ordinance, um, um, a livable wage ordinance within our community. Um, that's $15 per hour. So we really would want to at least um, hit that. Um, but then again, planning on how to sustain that, how programs will sustain that over time. And while, you know, uh, programs in our community and our state have really used their sub, uh, stabilization grants to increase wages. Um, you know, again, working with them to to think about how how they'll continue to to keep that with their current staff, but then also the sub. So, I think the collaborative piece is the one to just maybe keep coming back to. I mean, we're not going to set this in, in uh, alone. We're going to really rely on our partners and really rely on our programs and our hub to help drive what's needed. Anything else? As I said, I love to talk about this. I call it my fun side job. So, um, <laughs> you know, anyone that wants to stay around a minute, I know it's the end of a long day. I'll be around in the morning. On the brochure I handed out, it's got my contact information on the back. Um, so, for what it was three years ago that you first heard about our program and it took two years before she got around to talking to me about it. Um, well, that's the to talk to her. I called her right after Detroit. She's not telling the full story. <laughs> Luann in Vermont, I'm sure we, did, we lost count. I'm sure we had at least 15 calls and conversations before they decided to do it. So don't hesitate just to call with more questions or just to chat or just to get ideas and just think about a way that you can make it happen in, in your area. And we'd love to partner with you. And I have a question. Um, I just want to make sure because I'm a little confused. So the platform consists of everything that you do everything all the way to finding the substitute. No. No, pray okay. not. We don't. We you. We just make it available for you, and you have to find your own substitute, mm -hmm. and then do any training that you want to do for. That we have to have for our substitute. That's right. Right. Okay. 
So then the placement package. And that's a payment to you. That's how we do it locally for our service. Okay. And then, and you can set that fee. It doesn't, you don't have to use that placement method. It's several places are using it and it works well. Okay. Uh, we do recommend that you have uh, something up front so that you're not collecting money from, okay. from them. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. I hope you, you. enjoy Austin. <laughs>